Hello scholars, in this video we will be cracking open the different shades of respiratory MCQs that frequently come up on the MRCP part 1 exams. So let's dive into it. Now you'd be wondering why do we even need such a scoring system called the CURB 65 or CURB 65? A. To make the exams tougher and B. To help you assess the patient's condition quickly as well as to decide the treatment algorithm. Each one gives one point. Confusion should be new onset. AMT that is the abbreviated mental test should score 8 or below to give you one point. Urea should be more than 7. Respiratory rates should be more than 30. 1 point for BP, even if both the values are lower than this. Age can be more than 65 or equal to 65 to score 1 point. So in total, you can score 5 points. These are the two additional factors to count in which don't give a score, but points towards an adverse outcome. Here's the mortality prediction. And you know this already, right? Higher the score, worse the outcome. But as high as 57%, well, that looks really dangerous. Now, the British Thoracic Society hands out guidelines which says patients scoring up to 2 need to be prescribed oral antibiotics including one that can be penicillin or coamoxiclav or a macrolide or a combination of both depending on your clinical judgment. Patients scoring three and high will require IV antibiotics and immediate admission into the hospital. Patients scoring five for example will require a consult from the critical care team. Here's a pro tip. Even when you're not asked for a score value, use it mentally for all pneumonia related questions which ask about the choice of antibiotics or severity of pneumonia. Moving on, here's one MCQ to begin with. I'll show this MCQ for 10 seconds and I'll also give you some hints in the final 3 seconds. Please pause the video and read the stem carefully. Voila, that was simple, right? Trap pneumonia, like you had guessed it correctly. Now, this is the 3D scanning electron microscope picture of trap pneumonia. Looks beautiful, doesn't it? This is Klebsiella. Let's talk about community acquired pneumonia. Amongst the various causes for community acquired pneumonia, also known as CAP, trap pneumonia is our topper. Trap pneumonia being the most common cause of CAP will also feature most commonly in your exam. Worst case scenario, if you do not come to a final diagnosis in any pneumonia or little MCQs, I would strongly say go with strep pneumonia. Typical features of strep pneumonia will include the reaction activation of herpes simplex virus resulting in cold sores can be on the upper lip. This is an important marker for you for the exam because this will definitely be mentioned in the MCQ stem pointing you towards the strep pneumonia as an answer. Most guidelines for the management of streptococcal pneumonia recommend combination therapy with a penicillin and a microlite. Smoking is naturally an important risk factor. So we have a very beautiful chest x-ray image of a patient with streptococcus pneumonia. You can see this is the right side, this is the left side of the patient. What we can see here is a huge right sided upper consolidation over here. You can see the lung and this is the horizontal fissure which is bulging out. Also in the right lower lobes you can see some more consolidation. If you look at the CT image from the same patient, you can see that there is a huge right sided consolidation again. This is the right side of the patient. You can see this. Staph classically causes a cavitating pneumonia after a viral or influenza-like infection. It is common in immunocompromised patients, IV drug abusers, patients with a central line or acquired as a nosocomial infection. Patients with underlying diseases such as leukemia, lymphoma or cystic fibrosis who are immunosuppressed are at a higher risk of acquiring staph. Now, the chest x-ray will show bilateral cavitating bronchopneumonia in cases of staph. Pneumothorax, effusion and empyma are also fairly common. Remember, it causes a really serious infection. So treat with IV flucloxacillin initially or clarithromycin and penicillin allergic patients. Klebsiella aka the Friedlander's bacilli. This is our alcoholic bacteria. This commonly features in MCQs talking about aspiration pneumonia or greenish sputum production in an alcoholic patient. Chest x-ray features abscesses and empyma formation which are likely to occur in the upper part of the middle lobe of lungs or the lower part of the upper lobes that is, the ones which are dependent in recumbent positions. Treat Klebsiella with cephalosporins like cefuroxim and aminoglycosides like amikacin or tobramycin. Since it affects immunocompromised people, the mortality is really high. If only the Alcoholics Anonymous would know this. Let's move on to some MCQs again. You can pause the video and solve it. Alright, you guessed it right, it is mycoplasma. 
Now these are your cue words which you need to remember to diagnose mycoplasma infections. Here's another one for you to look at. Okay, this describes the mycoplasma in even more depth. This does look beautiful. Mycoplasma is this long filamentous, smallest teeny tiny bacilli. The best example of size doesn't matter in life. These are the smallest free living organisms causing such nasty lung parenchymal infections. Whoa! Causing epidemics classically every four years. The key word we are looking for is cold agglutinins, which should make you answer mycoplasma with confidence. These cold agglutinins are basically harmless IgM antibodies which are normally present in plasma but due to our mycoplasma infections they get produced in large numbers and start attacking our RBCs and platelets causing hemolytic anemia and thrombocytopenia a strange example of molecular mimicry. The disease hits younger patients giving them headaches, malaise, cough. Interestingly, the chest x-ray findings might be really much more severe than the patient's real conditions. Just like erythema multiforme is commonly associated with mycoplasma, we also find many extra pulmonary complications like vomiting, diarrhea and stranger ones like meningoencephalitis, bullous meringitis, those painful vesicles on the tympanic membrane, pericarditis, myocarditis, hepatitis, pancreatitis and ITP, acute glomerulonephritis. That's too much of an itis for one small thing. The diagnosis is usually via serology and PCR or when your gram stain comes negative for bacteria, while the MCQs still do a positive Coombs test. Okay, so why am I stressing so much over this? It's because atypical pneumonias are important to diagnose correctly, both in the exams as well as our wards, as they do not respond to penicillins or cephalosporins. So you need to add macrolides that's such as clarithromycin, doxycycline to treat them. The lack of cell wall makes them susceptible to macrolides and doxycycline, that is a tetracycline. Here's another question for you. Let's try to find out what Dr. Bob has. Okay, Dr. Bob has Legionella and the right answer to that was clarithromycin. Legionella typically infects the air conditioning systems. So the questions typically give out a history of recent hotel stay, attending conferences, cruise ships, any place where you would expect air conditioning or water cooling systems. Any case which has hyponatremia, please consider Legionella as a very, very, very important differential. This is the hallmark of Legionella. Now the disease does get complicated by the presence of GI symptoms such as diarrhea and vomiting. Typically the illness starts fairly abruptly with high fevers, shivering, severe headache and muscle aches. The cough is dry initially and dyspnea is common. Confusion, delirium, diarrhea and vomiting can dominate the clinical picture, masking the true diagnosis of pneumonia. But now you know what to look for. Interestingly, focal cerebellar neurological signs can occur with Legionella, but thankfully the patient has amnesia on recovery. Now, you need to treat Legionella just like you would treat mycoplasma with macrolides such as clarithromycin or azithromycin and feel free to replace it with doxycycline in questions if the patient is allergic to macrolides. Moving on to another MCQ. Let's see what did Harry get from that cruise he went on three days ago. Oh, you really guessed it right. It is Leech Nala. Another one for you to try out. Now this question will really reinforce what we read earlier about Klebsiella. Yes, it is aspiration pneumonia. You guessed it absolutely right. The dullness at the apex, right middle lobe, consolidation, alcoholic patient, pyrexia, purulent sputum. We spoke about this right at the Klebsiella slide. Moving on to the next one. Now this is a huge question so take your time reading it properly. The answer is intravenous amoxicillin and clarithromycin. 
This is what you would do to treat community acquired pneumonia. You guessed it right, yes, it is streptococcus. There's another question. Voila! Again, this is the streptococcus pneumonia which occurred after a flu-like infection and then reactivating the cold sores on her upper lips. Now here's an interesting question. Let's see if you can find out what Jack has. Okay, so you guessed it right. This is Pneumocystis zero at C, pneumonia, desaturation on exercise, previous history of hemophilia A, white plaques, chest x-ray showing perihyla fluffy opacities. All this points towards Pneumocystis zero at C. Let's dive straight into it. Now, Pneumocystis zero at C, being the most common opportunistic infection in AIDS, occurs in patients usually when the CD4 counts dip below 200. Exercise-induced desaturation is a very important marker of any question which is trying to point us to pneumocystis. Fluffy shadowing around the perihilar area is also quite characteristic. Cotrimoxazole is the treatment of choice given IV in patients with severe diseases as well as IV pentamidine if the disease is really severe. Give steroids if the patient is hypoxic, for example PO2 less than 9.3 kPa. This really decreases the risk of respiratory failure by 50% and death by a third. In certain MCQs of pneumocystis with concurrent TB, you can start treatment for tuberculosis simultaneously with pneumocystis. Oh, by the way, what do you think about pneumocystis hero at sea? Is it a fungus or a protozoa? Type in the comment box below. If you've watched it this far, we would like to thank you for your precious time by giving out one bonus topic, Chlamydia citrusy. Now the bird lovers amongst you will hate it, but Chlamydia citrusy occurs in middle-aged people who keep parrots as pets. It's a fairly low mortality illness, but quite popular in our exams. So you need to watch out for such hints, not only in the MCQs, but also in your words. After all, our patients are our best teachers. Don't forget to solve 10 respiratory MCQs from your favorite online question bank. If you like this video, smash the like button. If you dislike this video, do not forget to share it with your enemies. Bella ciao!